Hello there guys. Today we're going to look at question two from paper one of the English language exam, which is the language question. Now, although this uh, tutorial is focusing specifically on one question, actually the same skills are applicable and transferable to language paper two, question three, which is also focusing on language. And actually, this particular skill is really at the heart of all your language and literature papers. Um, so that's what we're going to focus on today, the language question. So remembering that on paper one you're going to get a small extract um, and it's really important that you only take your evidence from these lines uh, that you've been given there at the top. Uh, just a bit of you know, uh, advice here about the nature of the question itself. Make sure you look precisely about how long, you know, what you've been asked to do. How does the writer use language here to describe the effects of the storm? Don't just generally talk about language. It's got a very precise focus here, which is the storm. Now, the exam board have, have included you could here. Um, and I think that you know, the advice I'm giving my students is that you should view it as could. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I, I would advise you to exclude that third bullet point. In, in my experience, when students talk about sentence forms, they really struggle to do much with it other than identify, here's a simple sentence, here's a minor sentence, whatever it might be. Now, if you do see something interesting, so a question, or maybe you've got a real impact sentence, fine, so long as you're going to focus on the words within that, rather than just, here's a short sentence that catches your attention. Okay, so first things first, what are we going to do? We're going to make sure that we've got enough um, to talk about um, at least two, but ideally three, um, and I'm going to be old school on this and talk about P points. So we're going to need to find two or three pieces of evidence in this extract. Now it's about the effects of the storm. So as I read through here, the immediate thing that occurs to me is that the wind is lashing uh, the trees. And what I'm drawn to in that is this verb, lashing. Rain on the rooftop and thunder. He turned on the light with the sensation of being adrift in a boat, pushed closer to the bulk of the large dog sleeping beside him. Pictured the roaring Pacific Ocean. Okay, I find that an interesting word. And I see in the next bit that it's spilling in furious waves. So I might think about that adjective, furious, that's used there as well. He lay listening to think about this. He was still tangled in the images. I like that verb there as well. Really, this is about what some people might call neon words, words that stand out to you as having a powerful effect. Now, the key then is for us to make sure that our P point is actually developing the core skill here, which is exploring the effects on readers, i.e. what it makes us feel and what it makes us think. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on this, the wind lashing at the trees, because I think there's quite a lot I could do there. Now, I wouldn't start with a lengthy introduction to this, but I would try to contextualise the quote. So, what, you know, what is the writer using that particular verb to do? So, I'm just going to sort of go straight into um, the writer, focusing on the writer at work here. The writer uses the... Now, if I'm trying to push my marks up here, maybe I should try to qualify this verb a bit. Um, what kind of a verb is it? Well, to me, it feels quite violent, so I'm going to say the writer uses the violent verb. And then we've got a quote, lashing. Right, what is that being used to do? Sometimes students say the writer uses the verb lashing. This makes readers think blah, 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 but we need to contextualise it. The writer uses the violent verb, lashing, to describe... What's he doing here? To describe something to do here with the power of the storm uh, and the forcefulness of the wind. So I'm showing here that I'm aware of why, how and why that particular word is being used in this extract. So now I need to zoom in on the word. Sometimes it's helpful to think about putting a word under a microscope or just to think about a camera where you zoom in using your lens. So 
let's have a let's really think about lashing. So lashing has connotations. We may know this word. Connotations are the pictures you get in your head from a particular word. Lashing has connotations of, well, what does that word make you think about if something's lashed? Um, has connotations of perhaps a whip, um, sort of, you know, lashing the trees. So if lashing has connotations of a whip, what does that tell me about the effects of the storm? Lashing has connotations of a whip suggesting the storm is I'm going to I'm going to think that here it makes it almost sound cruel and vicious. And what about the tree? If a tree has been lashed by the wind, storm is cruel and vicious, and the the trees are helpless. Okay, that's kind of what lashing makes me think of. Lashing as condition as a whip, suggesting the storm is cruel and vicious and that the trees are helpless. Okay, so that's sort of I've zoomed in on what the word means, but haven't yet thought about effects on readers. So it's important that I make an explicit point here. As readers, we feel what? What do we feel about this? Does this storm seem normal? Does it seem vicious? If I had to picture a storm where it's lashing, the wind is lashing the trees, what do I, what do I picture? So as readers, we feel that this storm is destructive as it is overwhelming and attacking everything in its path, including the trees. So what do I, I could develop this a little further by saying, you know, trees don't seem to me to be something that are weak, including the trees. Um, we don't think of trees as being weak. Okay. They are sturdy and can resist most weather. However, Full stop there. However, this storm is particularly brutal. Okay, so we've got here, I'm just going to zoom out slightly. This is probably what we'd consider to be one point evidence explain point. Now you can see how long this has taken me to do that one point. Obviously I'm talking to you as well, but it's probably taken me four minutes um, just of, of writing, coming up with my ideas and writing that up. And what I would encourage you to think about is that it would be better, far better, for you to do just two points like this that really sort of focus in on the meaning of words and how we respond as readers than it would be to do four, five, six different examples but that you only do half a sentence afterwards. If we're really trying to push it, um, the thing that we would need to add on here is some evaluation. Um, so I, I might add on here, this is a powerful image which demonstrates nature's, um, nature's I'm going to use power again, nature's strength and dominance. Okay, so when I start using words like this is powerful or this is significant, I'm moving up into evaluation. So this for question two, I would be encouraging my students to try to produce two or if you're completely, you know, in the zone and you, and you can um, do this very quickly, aiming for three points just like this. If you do that, you'll be not far off getting full marks for this question. So recap, two or three quotes, make sure you zoom in 
and explore effects on readers.